In this Stellaris build, we're utilizing the Helito system in combination with the Stargazer trait and the Necrophage origin to have six Gaia worlds and approximately 275 pops in less than 15 years. But what is the Helito system? The Halito system is a guaranteed star system that will always appear in every game. Upon entering, you are presented with an anomaly that, once resolved, unlocks a new system named Dasha. This system houses six Gaia worlds inhabited by approximately 220 pops of a pre-FTL civilization. Our goal is to claim these six Gaia worlds, along with their inhabitants, as early as possible, ideally within the first 15 years of the game. To achieve this, we adopt the Necrophage origin, allowing us to seamlessly integrate the numerous new pops into our empire. Other origins are also possible, but it's significantly more difficult to take over such a high number of pops without causing an economic collapse, unless you purge them. We choose to play as a hive mind so we can take the Stargazer Civic. This is essential for the build for three reasons. First, it allows us to quickly reach the Helito system and bypass obstacles. Secondly, it enables us to return to the system once the hyperlanes are blocked post our initial invasion. More on this will be discussed later. And lastly, it benefits us with a minus 20% reduction in Starbase influence distance cost. We play as a devouring swarm, and a unique aspect comes into play here. With the Necrophage origin... Pops aren't instantly devoured as usual, but are directly transformed into our main species. This way, we can still take advantage of numerous other bonuses, particularly the 50% reduction in influence costs for starbases, the minus 25% ship build costs, and the plus 33% naval capacity. As a hive mind, we don't need to worry about happiness. Hence, we don't require consumer goods. In addition, we obtain the necrophage trait which significantly reduces the upkeep cost of pops. Minus 75% pop growth might sound severe, but it doesn't matter since it won't be our species growing on our planets. Instead, it'll be the pre-FTL civilization from our two guaranteed habitable worlds. We also reap the benefits of the Stargazer trait, with the reduced resettlement cost and increased habitability being particularly noteworthy. Moreover, we adopt the Intelligent trait to enable us to quickly recover from any research deficits later on. As stargazers, we begin the game without any research labs, which we need to investigate and develop initially. We choose unruly, even though it hurts a bit this time, and quick learners for our leaders. Alongside this, we select solitary, as pop housing isn't a problem, and charismatic, to better manage our stability, especially when integrating new pops. The traits of our prepotent species are completely irrelevant as a devouring swarm. Either way, at the start of the game, they will be purged and transformed into our main species without us being able to prevent it. Here, you can choose whatever you want. Since we need to construct many buildings to create sufficient jobs, it's advantageous to choose a frozen world. This way, we have an increased chance for mineral districts. Choose a governor as your leader type and opt for the principled trait for a bit more stability. In the game options, we choose Tiny as the galaxy size, because the larger the map, the more difficult it becomes for us to reach Halito first. Additionally, we select the maximum number of AI empires. So, how exactly do we find Halito? We employ a trick for this. Slightly zoom out of the galaxy, click on your exploration vessel, and choose the survey option. This way, we can see the system names even if they have not yet been revealed. In order to save us from having to sift through all the stars, we are on the lookout for a unique system featuring binary stars, one characterized by a large star with a smaller companion star positioned to its lower left. Given that such arrangements aren't exceedingly common, our search should not consume too much time. I was lucky and found Helito just a few systems away. In my other test plays, it was equally successful, even when Helito was quite distant. However, if it's located entirely on the other side of the galaxy, I would advise a restart. The next steps after locating Helito involve building a robust economy in terms of basic resources. Aim to specialize your homeworld and the two later conquered guaranteed habitable worlds into planets for mining, energy, and food. Due to the Stargazer trait, we start with 10 fewer pops, which makes our start a bit slow. Therefore, ensure that a spawning pool exists on each planet, and a bit later on, establish a sensorium site for increased unity. 
Construct hydroponics bays and solar panel networks on your star bases for additional food and energy production. The pre-FTL species on our two guaranteed habitable worlds are also hive-minded pops. Unlike non-hive-minded pops such as those in the Dacha system, they thus gain full citizenship. As soon as you've conquered them, immediately deactivate population and migration controls, allowing these pops to grow without the minus 75% necrophage debuff and move freely. Once the two guaranteed habitable worlds have been conquered, it's time to initiate the Helito campaign. The explanation of how exactly this works will follow later. After conquering all six Gaia worlds, it takes a few years to convert all the new pops and to stabilize the economy. To expedite this transformation, spread the pops designated for purging across all available planets. By purging, we're not making many friends in the galaxy. Therefore, secure the outer borders with strong star bases and invest in research and ships. As diplomacy is not an option for a devouring swarm, conquest is the only way. Annoying claims are unnecessary. What's conquered becomes ours immediately. So go forth and conquer the galaxy. But first, some theory. Be sure to research the Corvette as your first priority, as we cannot conquer the Gaia worlds without it. Research labs are also indispensable to get our research up and running as quickly as possible. In the society category, hydroponic farming is the highest priority. After conquering Dacha, weapons technologies should be a priority. Especially at the beginning, try to only research the currently best ones, which would be the Whirlwind Missiles, the Devastator Torpedoes, and the Phase Disruptor. Also important are the Afterburners, which make our ships faster and therefore should not be missing especially in the Torpedo and Disruptor builds. In the Halito operation, our main adversary is a star base, against which missiles are highly effective. As the game progresses, we will bolster our fleet with Disruptor Corvettes. Instead of diverting resources to build destroyers, we'll continue expanding our fleet of Corvettes until we can unlock cruisers. During the mid-game, incorporating Torpedo Disruptor Cruisers and Missile Torpedo Cruisers will significantly enhance our fleet's strength. In terms of traditions, we start with prosperity for an early economic boost, but only take prefabricated buildings. Next, we complete the synchronicity tree in full before finishing off prosperity. After that, we focus on supremacy to prepare ourselves for war. Regarding Ascension perks, transcendent learning is a solid choice. Even though this build doesn't heavily rely on leaders, having powerful ones can always give a substantial advantage. One vision is also beneficial as it not only increases unity, but also reduces amenities requirements, aiding in maintaining stability. Galactic Force Projection provides an enormous boost to fleet capacity, especially in the early game, which should not be underestimated. Other recommended perks include Interstellar Dominion, but only if Helito is so far away that the influence costs for building the starbase there are prohibitively high, even with all available buffs. Engineered evolution is advisable for hive minds in order to unlock the genetics tradition tree later. Hive worlds can also be useful, not for our Gaia worlds, but for our starting worlds and other conquered planets. At the start of our game, we're operating with a very limited number of workers, because our prepotent species is immediately subsumed. To kickstart our economy, we need to minimize the number of maintenance drones to zero. Despite this, our amenities will remain positive and our stability will stay above 50%. Next, we prioritize the mining drones to enhance our mineral production. After that, we decrease the count of tech drones to ensure at least one agri-drone is operational. This way, we start without deficits in the basic resources. If managing stability seems too much effort, you can delegate this task to the AI, which generally does a decent job. To do this, deactivate all options except for amenities and deviancy. Hold down the shift key while doing this to set it as the default for all future planets. As a necrophage, you don't build colony ships. Instead, you conquer planets from pre-FTL civilizations using two transport ships. Send your science ships to the nearest planets and start surveying them. Invest in additional minerals from the market as your budget allows, but keep your purchases to a maximum of 42 units per transaction to avoid inflating the market price in the long term. Construct two assault armies to quickly conquer any discovered planets inhabited by pre-FTL civilizations. Select the Finding the Voice agenda as your first agenda for additional unity gain. Begin the invasion on the first pre-FTL world with your newly built transport fleet. 
After the victory, build a spawning pool as the first building. Then, set population control to no population control and migration control to no migration control. Proceed the same way with the second pre-FTL world. Once both pre-FTL worlds are secured and captured, it's time to conquer the Helito system. How Helito can be found using the survey function was already shown at the beginning. Survey the Helito system and establish a starbase there. Bring at least one exploration vessel and one engineering vessel and investigate the the missing planets anomaly. Upon completion of the anomaly investigation, the Dacha system will be revealed. After surveying it, establish another starbase there as well. Prepare the following fleets for invasion. Transport Fleet A with just one ship as the vanguard for the initial invasion. Transport Fleet B with at least 650 plus army strength to act as the primary invasion force. Fleet A consisting of only one corvette to trigger the war. Fleet B with at least 450 strength to destroy the enemy starbase. Use the missile design as shown here for this purpose. In the ship designer, remove all components from your corvette design and save it. The pre-FTL civilization in the Dacha system will copy the design shown here, not the one from your built fleet. Under no circumstances should you upgrade your fleet afterwards. Send Transport Fleet A to the Dacha system and initiate an invasion on any planet there. Important, all other fleets must stay outside the Dacha system. When the initial invasion commences, we'll be abruptly ejected from the system and a notification will appear. All hyperlane connections to Dacha will vanish. This is the moment when our ship design gets cloned. It's crucial now to react promptly to prevent the AI from fortifying its defenses. Now dispatch Fleet A, the single corvette, into the system. You'll receive another notification informing you that all the hyperlane connections to Dacha have been restored. Now that we've established contact, we can immediately declare war, which is exactly what we're going to do. Now dispatch Fleet B, our main force, into the Dacha system. It will encounter a simple star base with a strength of 240 and an opposing fleet of strength zero, made up of ships without any components. Of course, we easily triumph in this battle. Council agenda ready. Finally, it's time to bring in the invasion forces. Send in Transport Fleet B and set its stance to aggressive, ensuring automatic invasions of all six Gaia worlds. It's worthwhile to assign a general to the invasion forces to ensure victory. After conquering the last planet, the Dacha system and all its planets are ours. Now the process of integrating its inhabitants into our empire begins. The integration process is somewhat simplified by the fact that it begins immediately with the conquest of each planet. The inhabitants are now being transformed into our species, which, due to the high number, will take several years. To simplify the post-conquest process, you might consider delegating amenities and deviancy management back to the AI. You can do this as soon as you've captured a planet, rather than waiting until the end of the war. Initially, make sure to prioritize jobs associated with essential resources to balance out any immediate deficits. If needed, temporarily deactivate complex drone jobs such as the Evaluator, Synapse Drone, and Hunter Seeker Drone to free up more drones for essential resources. We primarily need sufficient food and minerals to create jobs for the newly integrated population. We accumulate substantial amounts of society research from purging. Utilize this to prioritize research that boosts fleet capacity. Replace the exploration and engineering vessels with up-to-date science ships and construction ships to simplify micromanagement once you've researched the hyperdrive technology. Make sure to restore your old ship design and also upgrade your fleet with the hyperdrive technology. Distribute the pops that are being purged evenly across all available planets in order to speed up the process. In the year 2220, about five years after the conquest of the Dacha system, we are consolidated and have a booming economy with a good research output. We have specialized our planets into five research worlds, including our home world, two mining worlds, one food world, and a generator world. The purging process is still ongoing and continues to make steady progress. We need to significantly bolster our fleet immediately, 
as we've come into contact with a neighboring civilization that strongly disapproves of our purging practices. As our third civic, we choose subspace of FAPSI for additional naval capacity and increased sublight speed, which particularly benefits our ships with short weapon ranges. By the year 2230, we have a fleet strength of about 28k, but we're only currently using two-thirds of our fleet capacity. This is because we're already in our second war, this time with our two eastern neighbors. The war in the north was won, allowing us to expand further. And we're surrounded by enemies and therefore must simultaneously fortify our outposts and secure our flanks. Despite these challenges, our research output is at 1900. We have 365 POPs, and we've already deployed several cruisers equipped with disruptor technology. We are therefore significantly superior to our current adversaries and should win the war. However, detailing further would exceed the scope of this video, as it was mainly about the conquest of the Dacha system. Thank you for watching!